Hello Universe, uh, Josh here. I'm just making a video uh, responding to someone who sent me a message over YouTube um, asking a question about uh, emphasis in poetry and how to know which syllables in a song or poem to emphasize. And I think I have an answer, so I'm going to try and answer in this video. Okay, um, and I think one of the reasons why this is confusing is because um, poetic... Uh, when you analyze a poem formally, there's only kind of there's only one way to write whether something is emphasized or not emphasized, and that's to write the little you write a little uh, scoopy thing, <laughs> scoopy thing over top of the um, over the top of the syllable if it's a soft sound and an accent line over top of the hard or emphasized sound. Um, so I'm just going to draw, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we got, this is a line of poetry. Oh, I did that wrong. Well, I guess that can be a, a soft sound or a hard sound, which is what I was going to talk about. So I'm just going to finish this off. This is a, we got, this is a, Notice if it's soft like that, it's just this. Um, but if it were a hard, like an accented sound, if it were that sign but not that sign, it would be this is a line of poetry. Um, the word um, short nouns are almost always uh, emphasized, always accented, and then. Um, the connecting words like of and a uh and to are usually not emphasized and they're usually soft. And then poetry, um, you have to um, you have to be a kind of a native speaker to to know how these work. Um, you have to be fairly familiar with English. So poetry, obviously, the first syllable is. Um, emphasized and then it goes poetry and notice that's not poetry that would be a that would be with the middle syllable emphasized so it's poetry so that's how that works so that's how these markings and you'll see these if you take poetry classes um, or if you study formal poetry you'll see these markings um, and they just tell you which syllable is supposed to be uh, emphasized, and that's um, that's kind of theoretical because uh, you can always kind of change it up, and I I like to I like to see that in poetry readings. I like to see people um, change the way that they pronounce a word and where they put the emphasis on it. Um, why? Because partly I'm just a fan of novelty and, and new ways of hearing things and new ways of saying things and alternate uh, pronunciations. Sometimes what I like to hear, and not always, but sometimes what I like to hear, is if a word has an origin that has kind of been forgotten and the word is changed um, so that it's, it's spoken in a different way that doesn't remind us of where its origin or what it's related to. And then if you just tweak it a little bit to, to make the word sound like something else, something that we don't normally associate with it, but that might have had a historical association. Uh, it makes it interesting, and it makes it like, oh yeah, that came from there. Uh, so that's sometimes interesting to, to me. Um, I hope that made sense to you. I wish I had an example in front of me. I, I didn't really prepare for this video too much. Um, but what I was saying about, about this is that these markings, there's only the two markings in written poetry, they, or apparently like we only use those two markings, but they can mean some very different things. And one of the things is volume, is that you speak the accented syllables louder. That's one way to do it. Uh, it's not the only way. Another way would be to um, lengthen how long you're, you speak those ones. So. Um, if you really want to emphasize a syllable, um, let's see, this, 
instead of this. You know, it's it's just longer. It's and it's emphasized. Um, so length is the other way. And another way is the vowel sound actually changes when you um, accent a syllable. Um, so an i can turn into an e. Might be like i. Um, in a short. Uh, I don't again. I don't have an example of this one, but uh, if you wanted to emphasize a syllable, it's i it becomes e, and um, a be can become a uh, or u even. Um, and this is why we have uh, vowels that take on two different uh, sounds. Um, like uh, eh and e, um, and then um, so yeah, so the the sound becomes different, the vowel becomes different. Um, Non-emphasized or short syllables um, tend to have uh, tend to uh, go towards the uh sound. It's, they all become, they all kind of squish towards the, uh, and uh, you, you see that in the word the, and you might emphasize the word the as the, or if it comes before a, a word with, beginning with a vowel, excuse me, it can become the, and also if, if we want to say uh, something is the greatest, or we can also say it's the greatest, and that kind of, that means a different thing when you say the greatest versus the greatest. Um, so, yeah, the is the short version and the is the long version. So you're emphasizing the greatest as opposed to just the greatest. Um, and, you know, maybe they should change that, change the way that's spelled. Uh, although I don't know how you would spell the without confusing people the greatest. Often it would have a capital T. That would be an, an, uh, a signal that that's um, a capital T where it where you might not expect it. Like if it wasn't at the beginning of a sentence, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest ever, something like that. But it doesn't have to be pronounced that way. It just depends on how you speak and what you want to be emphasizing. Um, and yeah, unfortunately in writing that doesn't always, that cue doesn't appear, so you have to kind of make it up when you read it aloud. Um, and lastly, there's one more way that, that I know of anyways, I'm sure there are others, um, that you can uh, emphasize a syllable in a word. Do you see how I said a syllable instead of a syllable? I don't know why I, I did that, I'll have to analyze that use of the word a instead of a, but that's one example of emphasizing uh, a word or a word. Um, but I was saying the last one was intonation, and by intonation I mean um, uh, changing kind of the pitch of your voice when you say a word, and you see this at the end of questions. Um, at least, yeah. Uh, are you really going to do that? Um, notice how that is. Uh, it's it's not louder. It's not um, necessarily longer. It's just a different uh, pitch. And yes, I'm really going to do that. And then that's it. It is shorter when you say that. Are you really going to do that? Yes, I'm going to do that. So, um, uh, that, that little difference there, um, and it's, you know, it's something that you can just, it's something that requires kind of spoken proficiency with the language, and I don't know if this person who asked me the question is a native English speaker, but it does help if you are, or if you have a lot of experience with English, for example, because other languages, um, use uh, different strategies for emphasis and they don't necessarily use them exactly the same. I gave them in the order that I think that English uses them. Um, I think 
like volume is most important, then length, then vowel sound, then intonation. And in English, um, words tend to always have the same emphasis. Like for I was talking about poetry, it tends to be always pronounced the same way. It's always poetry. It's never changed to poetry. Although it could be if someone was trying to do something fun or different with the word. Uh, to emphasize something else about it. But yeah, the normal way to do it in English is it always has the same emphasis in that word. And other languages will have different meanings assigned to um, the emphasis. Uh, and uh, different kinds of emphasis will have different meanings. So an in a change in intonation doesn't necessarily mean that it's a question. Um, and that's just how we do it in English. And it might have a totally different meaning uh, in another language. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was going to say, in, in the original, um, the Greek, uh, poetry that, um, kind of all of our poetry ultimately goes back to, um, the poetry of, uh, the classical Greeks, um, their, uh, methodology, their, what they called e emphasis was, um, based on the length of the syllables rather than necessarily the volume or other things like that. And um, they had their own set of rules. And then what basically our English language came later and we based our, um, our poetry on that and our analysis of poetry, even though the way we speak, the way we speak and the way we emphasize things is a little bit different, well, is, can be quite different from that original kind of Greek model where they used long and short syllables um, for their poetic meter. Um, but yeah, where we use um, a slightly different, it's more of a volume thing for us. But it also has something to do with that quality of the vowel. That I versus E kind of, it, it, a little bit of it, yeah, it does retain that, this, the fact that the E sound is a little bit longer, you hold it a little bit longer than the eh sound. Um, so we still have a little bit of that, but it's it's different than it was. Or at least that's my understanding of it. Um, so uh, what I, the last thing I was saying before I got off track was um, just practice with the language. Um, practice with your friends. Try uh, saying the same sentence over and over again with um, different emphasis on the different words and like uh, let me see I went to the store 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 uh, you can see how each of those might have a very slightly different feel to them just dif different meaning to them so I mean just practice that to yourself and um, I think that's all I have to say about that I think that's all I had written down so, um, thank you for the question, and uh, bye for now.